Hi, my name is Jenna. I'm a TriDot athlete, and because I race triathlons, I'm always looking for ways to improve my efficiency on the bike. Now, I've done some research and read a few articles, watched a few YouTube videos, and have discovered that a wax-based lubricant is actually more efficient and will protect your chain longer than an oil-based lubricant. So, this video is my journey of switching over from an oil-based lubricant for my bike chain to a wax-based lubricant, and it's specifically hot wax. So the first thing is to degrease the chain. So I have a couple Gatorade bottles and I have more that need to be drank and emptied to be used. Uh, we'll start off with taking these uh, bike chains and that are already greased and degreasing them in one of the water bottles here filled with uh, gasoline overnight. And then we're going to work on degreasing after that, rinse it off, denatured alcohol last to dry, and then once all of it is off and it's dry, then adding paraffin and tungsten disulfide, which we are going to experiment with how much of that to use. The uh, thermometer here is to measure the temperature of the wax, which will be used in a small um, slow cooker, which I purchased at a thrift store. I've got some wire here to bend with the uh, tool to uh, drop the chain in and out of the containers and then eventually a, maybe a separate hanger for the uh, wax. Last night I put two bike chains in this uh, with gasoline. As you can see, I've got some gas cans over here. Left it outside so I didn't have to worry about fumes. Um, not super dirty, but it's just a little bit more dark than it was last night. It, this is a gas with stabilizers in it, so it may be a little different color than usual. Um, but I'll be pulling this out, putting in the degreaser next. All right, I took the chain out of the gasoline. I still have the, um, the uh, quick links, which I should not have put in there because they don't need to be degreased, but I'll have to get those out. Um, and so I've got this in the degreaser that both chains are in there. I'm going to shake it up. And um, I'll probably shake it up some more, but I'm going to let it sit for half an hour. And if you look, you can see there's actually some stuff at the bottom of this that looks like it came from the chains. wasn't expecting that. So it's been about half an hour. Um, can't really see much of a difference, although it is pretty cloudy. So um, the simple green was not, or degreaser was not cloudy when I first added the chain. So I imagine it's doing its job. So it's time to put it into some denatured alcohol, which I've poured into another container here. So I almost forgot that when I take the chain out of the degreaser, I gotta rinse it off. So um, I'm doing this in my work sink and um, the, uh, the hook here is used to take the uh, chain out, put it in, and uh, I made a small little itty bitty um, hook there to, <laughs> to get the, um, the, the quick links out because I put them in the degreaser. I was able to get them out with this little hook. So um, anyways, time to uh, rinse it off. They've been rinsed off, and now they're, uh, the two chains are in the denatured alcohol. That's going to sit for about half an hour. Uh, I did shake it up a little bit. Um, it's supposed to be completely clear after it's been sitting in there for half an hour, so I would expect it will be since these were not dirty chains. They were brand new to start off. Okay, so it's time to melt some wax, and you can... I got this off of... Uh, Amazon. It's just a, a block of wax, which uh, I'm going to break up into some pieces and put in the uh, slow cooker. And I have already bent a hanger um, so that it has a nice long place to um, uh, put the chain on. And then once it's in, I can, you know, swish it around because uh, this um, tungsten disulfide. Uh, doesn't stay in suspension very easily, apparently, so i um, gonna have to do a lot of stirring, I guess. 
Okay, so uh, we used a kitchen scale to measure out 500 grams of wax, and I've got the block wax in here um, starting to melt. And then uh, Damon has his crock pot here with his uh, wax, which is in little pellets. And so the plan is that we're each going to use our uh, tungsten disulfide bottles, and it's um, should be about 50 grams and we're just going to dump the whole thing in so we're not going to because uh, we've seen some videos online where they used 50 grams of PFTE so we're just going to assume that this will work the same and then um, we can make sure that the uh, temperature of the wax is right I've bought this thermometer so we could this was like $15 on Amazon um, it's a food grade so hopefully that'll work so we have a 10 to 1 ratio of paraffin wax to, um, uh, you could use PFTE powder, and it's uh, 1 to 3 micron size, uh, but we've chosen to use uh, the um, microluberol. It's a tungsten disulfide, also known as WS2, and this should be about 50 grams worth, so it's a 10 parts wax to one part uh, lubricant. It takes quite a while to melt so all the wax. Um, we've got it on high and the uh, temperature of this one, it needs to be around 200 degrees, which is around 93 Celsius. Um, this one has a ways to go. And uh, this one over here is smaller and has melted much faster and it's uh, a little bit too hot, so maybe I'll leave the lid off for a little bit. And I've already turned it back down to low. Yeah, it's gonna have, well, I'll leave the lid off. We're gonna add the uh, tungsten disulfide here to the, the, the paraffin wax that's melted. Oh, is it really powdery? Oh, it is. I was thinking it was more of a liquid. Okay. I've got the chain kind of short because this is a really small crock pot and uh, this little handle thing works really well for swishing it around. The tungsten disulfide is a little bit on the, oh yeah, I can see that right there. Yeah, it's going to uh, probably be kind of heavy and want to sink to the bottom. So we're going to swish it around and let it sit for 30 minutes, I think. So uh, we've pulled out a couple chains so far. We're hanging them up to dry and the tungsten disulfide does actually turn the paper towel black and it's pretty heavy. So we were stirring a lot and then just pull them out to drip real quick. But we're gonna need another couple hangers for the other <laughs> chains we're doing. So it's time to go bend some more hangers. How's the, oh yeah, look how stiff that is. <laughs> Wax is all dry. So when the chain is all waxed, it's pretty stiff. <clears throat> So we have to take it off of the wire and bend it over something hard. And in this case, we're going to use a piece of wood and just rub, bring it back and forth across it. So see how stiff it is. So this, this is just a piece of scrap wood and just going back and forth. loosens that up a lot easier. So we just keep working on it until, whoops. So once it is all loosened up, then we can put it on the bike with the quick links. All right, you wanna, I've got some gloves on because this actually hurts your hands a little bit. So, but you continue to keep going over it until it becomes a lot more pliable. And the, the last links are tough to get. I think I got it. Yeah, okay. Here is a list of items I used in this video. I put links to the online items in the description below. Now you can do this too.